brothers and sisters, we have entered the Holy Week. It is called Semana Santa in Spanish. And we cannot Im imagine a Filipino Holy Week, a Semana Santa without the Siete Palabras, the seven last words. And we would like, therefore, to accompany you in this journey of seven days towards Easter with the wonderful parting words of our God who says, You are my beloved above all else. Happy Retreat! This is um, Father June that uh, will be uh, uh, explaining to you this uh, word of Jesus from the cross. Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. Brothers and sisters, we are um, entering into um, the most sacred uh, days of um, the whole uh, ch uh, church calendar, uh, meaning to say the Holy Week. It's a very important uh, uh, moment for us, especially in this time of pandemic. Uh, there are many uh, considerations to, uh, to draw from, this, um, from these words. Um, I mean to, um, uh, to situate this uh, word of Jesus uh, from the cross, um, actually the last one when you think about it, um, in the total uh, the aspect or uh, venue of his whole life, in the context of his life, that is. Um, you know, when, um, when Jesus uh, started ministering to people, you could notice really his, um, he had an overriding concern, something that really um, was predominant and was uh, preeminent in his, um, in his whole uh, life. Ministry uh, to people, but not only during that uh, that uh, ministry, um, it could be seen from the very beginning of uh, his life, as the Bible tells us. We'll um, quote the Bible many times here. Um, the um, overriding concern of Jesus was exactly to do the Father's will. You will see that um, the um, letter to Hebrews, chapter ten, verse five, will say that um, when he was entering into this world, he was already, um, on his lips were being put the words from the Psalm 40, where he says, I come to do your will, O God. Look at that. He was just coming to the world. And um, um, we are being told already that uh, he was coming to do God's will, to do the, the will of his Father. And then when he was in chapter 4 of uh, John, the story of the Samaritan woman, um, you will see in the development of the story, there is, um, there is um, the statement of Jesus when um, his uh, disciples uh, came back bringing food. Rabbi, eat! And he says, um, I have food that you don't know of. And so they were wondering, did anyone bring him any food? And then um, he said, my food is to do the will of him who sent me and to accomplish his work. That's so very important. Look at that. That's his food. Do you think he was speaking metaphorically or literally? Uh, it's easy to, to think that he might not be metaphorical, you know, food, the doing of the will. No, 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 not quite. It, it can also be very, very literal. Why? Because sometimes, and Bible tells us this, he didn't even have time to eat ministering to people. Brother Sam, it was really something that he lived for and he lived by, uh, the, the, the doing the Father's will and the accomplishing his work. Not only that, that's why one of the words um, uh, of Jesus uh, from the cross will be, Father, it is finished. That's the word of Jesus, it is finished. What was finished? What is that it is finished? That's exactly the doing the Father's will. For this, um, in other words, um, it is very important for us to understand that that was uh, an overriding concern of Jesus from beginning till end. Nothing will, uh, will stop him from doing that. But I told you, it's not just during his ministry. Already from Hebrews, uh, when he was coming into this world, uh, the 
Prophets in chapter 10 verse 5. You know, um, uh, sacrifices and offerings you did not delight in. That's why you made me a body. You created a body for me. Because without, without, without that body, Jesus cannot die. I mean, that spirit cannot die. He is the Son of God. But He became flesh. He became embodied. He became a man. You know, in order that one day he will be able to do God's will. And what was that? To die for men. To, in order to save them, to buy them back, to redeem them. But this uh, it was, it was uh, to do the Father's will. I, uh, I, oh God, I come to do your will. And, uh, that's what he will be saying in that, in that um, passage in chapter 5 of, uh, chapter 10 rather, of uh, Hebrews verse 5 and 9. Brothers and sisters, the point is, I was saying, um, this, this um, overriding concern of Jesus will be manifested uh, in all that, he did, all that he did and didn't do anything that was just according to his will. You would remember that um, we began uh, the Lenten season with, um, um, of course, Ash Wednesday, but the first Sunday of, uh, of um, Lenten season was exactly the um, testing of Jesus in the desert. Brothers and sisters, the testing of Jesus in the desert. Uh, this time we, we read from St. Mark, who did not mention about the different kinds of tests that uh, was uh, um, heard to Jesus. But uh, you will see it in Matthew and you see it in, in Luke, uh, both in chapter 4 of uh, Matthew and chapter 4 of Luke. Brothers and uh, sisters, the, the point is, um, what was the testing all about? The, the, uh, it's important always when we read the, the Bible, uh, always read the text in context. Always read the text in context. What is the context of this testing of Jesus? Uh, brothers and sisters, by the way, don't talk about the temptation of Jesus, okay? I mean, uh, the, the word that is, um, is um, translated there, peradzomenos, perasthenai, uh, that's the Greek word, peradzo, uh, empirical, the word empirical comes from there, experiment comes from there. The point is, uh, uh, the uh, the word that, um, that uh, is translated temptation should be translated as testing. By the way, that's the same, the same uh, uh, problem in the Our Father, that when we, when we pray it, uh, there is a, and do not lead us to the test, it should be like that, not lead us not into temptation. That is, uh, uh, it, is, it is important to translate it properly. The point is, um, what was the testing of uh, the uh, uh, devil uh, to Jesus? The context of that, in chapter 3, at the end of chapter 3 in uh, Matthew, verse 16 to 17, um, we are told that after Jesus was, um, was baptized, he went out of the altar, and then there is the Holy Spirit that came down upon him like a dove, and out of the cloud spoke the voice who said, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Brothers and sisters, what was uh, exactly uh, uh, being said by, Jesus, by, by God the Father to Jesus there? Uh, thanks be to God, there was the Holy Spirit that, became, that came down upon him like a dove. Uh, the Spirit is, by the way, the, the principle of um, revelation to start with. He makes people understand uh, what, uh, the, what God is revealing. He's, he's, uh, he, is, uh, he helps unveil what is unco was covered yet. Uh, uh, in other words, we come to understand uh, the mystery be behind there. Um, he is the uh, principle of revelation. And secondly, he is a principle of renewal or transformation. And he is also the principle of reconciliation. Brothers here, uh, Jesus, uh, sisters, the, uh, he came to understand exactly what the Father said. That uh, this is my beloved son. And so he, he understood who he was. He wasn't just a man. He is the son of God, the beloved one. And also he came to understand what he was. What was he? The suffering Messiah. The suffering Messiah, contrary to what the Jews were expecting. They were expecting a, a glorious, you know, a, a victorious son of David, you know, the, 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 the messianic uh, Davidic king that will come to liberate his people. No, he will liberate his people not only from their, from their enemies, but also from sin particularly. And how is that? We're becoming a servant, a suffering servant. And so what, what was the, what is, um, uh, that's the context of, um, of uh, the uh, testing of Jesus, brothers, sisters, his baptism. And so in the, when he was being tested by the devil, did you, did you, do you remember what the devil said? Uh, he, they started, 
he started saying, if you are the son of God, you know, make this, turn these stones into bread. Brothers, sisters, please understand what the devil was saying. If you are the son of God, notice he, he, he understood that from the revelation by the Holy Spirit there at his baptism. He is really the son of God. And so in, in, in response, uh, he, Jesus was saying in many words, yes, you're correct, I am the son of God. But because I'm the son of God, I will be obedient to my father, not like you. You know, this obedient uh, spirit once upon a time, but now you're a devil. And uh, it's because of your disobedience, your, your pride. No, no, I will obey my father and I will take no shortcuts. I will go to the way of the cross. Brothers, that's exactly what, uh, what um, the, the, the Jesus was answering. Not by bread alone does man live but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. For this, uh, look at that. I mean, yes, I am the Son of God. And then second, the, you remember that? The second that, that testing was, if you are the Son of God, throw yourself down from this, uh, from the, from this um, uh, uh, height of the temple. Because the angels, after all, the, God, the scripture says, so I will uh, bury, bury you up so that you don't dash your feet against the stone. And Jesus will retort, yes, you are correct. I am the Son of God. And because Son, I will do the Father's will. I am not a social worker. I am Redeemer. I'm not just a performer. I am Redeemer. You know? and of course, the last testing was, uh, you know, uh, uh, if you, uh, you just uh, adore me, I'll give you everything, all this power. Oh boy, I mean, and Jesus tells them, get behind me, Satan. You know, you should adore God alone. You know? I am the Son of God, and I will do my Father's, uh, my father's will. I will save people by going through the cross. I'm the suffering Messiah. Brothers and sisters, look at that. And that, that, that that's the beginning of, of uh, Lent, brothers. The first Sunday of Lent. And just now, we are towards uh, the, last, uh, the last week here of, uh, of uh, the, the Lenten season. And we're commemorating the cross. Where Jesus will be saying victoriously, Father, into your hands. I commend, I commit my spirit. Brothers and sisters, um, because the, the, the word before this, he said, it is finished. I have accomplished your mission. Mission accomplished. I have done you well. Brothers and sisters, uh, why do we listen to the word of scriptures? It's important for you and me to understand why. Because, brothers and sisters, there is, you know, uh, Romans chapter 15, verse 4. In Romans 15, 4, Paul says, Whatever was sweetened previously was sweetened for our instruction. So that from the stories of scriptures about people who endured many testing, suffering, and, and, and tribulations, uh, they also experienced the encouragement that God gave them. God saw them through. So that from those scripture stories, we may have hope. Brothers and sisters, that's important for you and me to understand. Everything in the Bible is for our instruction. Because those stories give us real hope that God will really deal with us in the same way. He will not just let us go through the trials and difficulties and, 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 and hardships and whatnot, but also see us through there. It will really, those stories there, stands as an example for us, giving us hope. Brothers and sisters, um, there are two, uh, two um, uh, uh, words that uh, you will hear in this, in this uh, recollection uh, from Jesus on the cross, from the cross. The, the point is, um, two of them begins uh, in their quotations both from Saint Luke, you know, and they, and they begin with Father, you know, Father. The first one was, Father forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. Brothers, and, and here the, the, the theme that I am developing is Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. They are all both addressing God as Father. That's so very important for you and me. Our baptism, uh, this is the whole context of, the, of, the, uh, of the, uh, this uh, Lenten season, brothers and sisters. Uh, it's always to be seen in the context of our baptism. Just like everything uh, from Jesus uh, uh, emanated from his baptism, brothers. His testing, his, uh, his um, uh, uh, transfiguration, everything else that uh, we saw and we heard about in, uh, in the Sunday Gospels. 
exactly is based on, on the, the baptism of Jesus. He came to realize who he was, the Son of God, God beloved, and what he was, the suffering Messiah. And brothers, this is exactly the same for us. We should see the whole Lenten season in the context of our baptism, because one day we were baptized. We became beloved daughters and sons of the Father, beloved brothers and sisters of, of the Son Jesus, and living temples of the Holy Spirit. And in fact, um, what happens on Easter Sunday is not just we commemorate Jesus' rising from the dead, not at all. We commemorate our rising with Him. I love the statement of, um, of um, uh, Francis Xavier Durwell. Uh, he was a uh, redemptorist theologian. He wrote very much about the, uh, the resurrection of Jesus. And, uh, and uh, he said something like, On the cross, Jesus died alone and he rose as church. Brothers and sisters, yes, Jesus died alone, you know. Of course, there were two other guys there, but that, he was alone, he was dying, you know. He was dying. He himself was dying. But brothers and sisters, he did not just rise on his, own, by, uh, by, on his own or for his own. He rose as church in us, with us, through us, brothers and sisters. That's a beautiful realization. Uh, it's important for you and me to consider our, our being Christians uh, really as a sharing in the, the recent life of Christ. We are, we are, uh, we are like uh, what St. Paul was saying. Um, if you have been that dead with Christ and buried with Him, Colossians chapter 3, then think of things that are above, not things that are below, because your, your, your life is hidden with Christ. Really, I mean, uh, He was hidden in the tomb. Just like us, we were hidden under the water of baptism. You know, once upon a time, baptism was being, uh, you know, you're being immersed, immersed in water, you know. But then you know, we come out of that, just like Jesus rose from the dead. Brothers and sisters, um, I, I want us to, uh, to take away from this, uh, from this uh, talk a realization that we are really privileged to be able to call God Father. Uh, in, the, in the Gospels, um, Jesus taught us the Our Father, the Lord's, usually we say Lord's Prayer, but I would like to suggest a, um, a, a modification of that uh, title. It, it's kind of wrong, wrong title, uh, and that the Our Father. Um, you find it in Matthew, in Matthew chapter 6, verses 9 to 13. And then uh, the, uh, the, uh, that's the Our Father that we memorize, Our Father in heaven, holy be your name, your kingdom come, something like that. Um, and, uh, and then there's another version in Luke, in chapter um, 11, verse 2 and 3, a shorter version. Uh, the other one is from uh, 9 to 13, this is just from 2 and 3. The, the point is, brothers and sisters, in, um, in the, the Our Father, please understand, uh, in the Our Father, um, I think you will be seeing uh, some slides here at this point. Um, Matthew uh, addresses uh, him with our Father in heaven, holy be your name, our Father in heaven. Brothers and sisters, it is our Father in heaven because it is the community's prayer. It's a communitarian prayer. It's the tone, the whole community of Matthew praying this. In um, Luke, it is just Father. Not our Father, Father. You know? um, Brothers and sisters, that's very significant. By the way, um, um, uh, scholars tell us, the, uh, tell us that uh, the, uh, math, the, the, the our Father in Luke is the more original um, uh, as far as wording is concerned and structure is concerned. And, and the, the one of, um, of um, Matthew is longer and more elaborate, I, I, as you will see in the comparison afterwards. The point is that, brothers and sisters, the, um, the introduction of Jesus to our, the, our Father in, um, in uh, uh, Matthew, in, uh, verse, uh, in Matthew chapter 6, verse 9, he says, this is how you are to pray. That's important. It is a how. This is how you are to pray. In other words, it is not um, a... Uh, uh, formula that we are supposed to repeat just like that, you know, but it is a how to pray. Um, that's why I was telling you, it's not just the Lord's Prayer, it's the Lord's model prayer, because it's a model of praying, brothers and sisters. 
when you stay at the introduction in uh, in Luke, you will see is when uh, when you pray, say. Look at that. When you pray, say. In Matthew, this is how you are to pray. That you are so much so in, in in Luke, you see that this is a formula that he's giving us. You know, um, when you pray, say. And so the the, the prayer that, that comes up. Uh, after that is a is a formula that we give, we repeat or something like that we pray ourselves but it is introduced as how about this this is um, when you pray say what are we gonna say father like that the word is father not our father in heaven no 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 and it's important to to do that because you see that it is always in in uh, in uh, in uh, my, um, Luke's gospel uh, the word Father addressed to God by Jesus. Brothers and sisters, why, why am I saying this? Um, because I, I hope during this uh, Lenten season, during this, this time of um, uh, real recollection that our mother, the teacher, the church gave us, we have learned how to call on God. The prayer that Jesus uh, told us, taught us, is not going to be just recited like that by road, by routine, without even thinking about that. In fact, we don't give ourselves to, uh, to think about it. Why? We just rattle it off so fast. Our Father in heaven, Lord, your name, your kingdom come, you will be done. I mean, Jesus did not teach us like that. He wanted us to address God, Father. The equivalent of what we call our Father, that is. In His own language, if you uh, heard it in the, in the original language spoke uh, with, Jesus we spoke with, and taught us this uh, prayer in Aramaic, that would be Abba, Abba, A-B-B-A, Abba. The equivalent of that would be Daddy, Dad, Pa, Papang, Tai, Itai, Tatai, Tai, any, any which way, or Popsy, something like that. I mean, uh, brothers, uh, sisters, it's important for you and me to, to really um, realize this. Because ask yourself, how do you address God when you pray? Really, honestly, how do you address God when you pray? Don't you say, Lord, you know, oh God. Some people will say, Papa God. You know. Brothers, Jesus just told us, address him the way you call your dad. Brothers and sisters, by the way, that's a, the, first, the first important thing for us to learn. Because when you say, this is the our Father that uh, Jesus taught us in Matthew, it is a how to pray. How to pray means you will imitate this. Exactly what are we going to imitate in this? Brothers and sisters, the first thing we'll imitate here is how to call God. He just don't say, oh Lord, oh God. Oh, Almighty God, and in which way? No, 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 no. Jesus taught us, brothers and sisters. It is something that we in the church don't uh, don't um, really emphasize so much. I mean, uh, and in fact, uh, we we see we, we pray in the church, Oh God, Almighty God, and something like that. Oh Lord, I mean, what about that? What did Jesus taught us, brothers? And I assure you, brothers and sisters. If you imitate what Jesus was saying, because it is a how, you got to imitate it. Uh, brothers and sisters, call God the way you call your daddy, you call your father, you know. You will be amazed what happens. What do you mean by that, Father? Yeah, try it, brothers, try it. I hope you're listening to me. Uh, when you go home and you, uh, you pray tonight or whatever uh, a personal prayer you pray, uh, address God the way you call your dad, call you, uh, the way you call your father, you know, and see the difference, brothers and sisters. I know there will be difficulties in that, in that. You will not be able to do that right away. Why? The devil will not allow you to do it. Why? Because he, he, return, he really turns green up with envy when, um, when he, uh, he sees us addressing God so tenderly, so lovingly, so intimately as daddy. I mean, it's a fantastic reality. By the way, not even the angels can do that. Not only the devils. The angels, they are creatures of God. Not children of God. We have been born in baptism, brothers and sisters. 
whereby we have learned and, uh, and um, given that great privilege by Jesus to call God as He called them, Abba, Daddy. That's so important. Brothers and sisters, um, um, please don't be surprised that if you also cannot do that, not only because the devil will hinder you, but you can, you can, you can shut the devil up, you know, because uh, he has nothing to do with this. The Holy Spirit can inspire you to do this, you know. In fact, it is quoted in in Saint um, uh, in the letter of Saint Paul to the Romans, chapter eight, verse fifteen, and then in the letter to of Saint Paul to the Galatians, chapter four, verse six. Uh, and the Holy Spirit, you know, is poured into our hearts, whereby we call God a Daddy. Brothers and sisters, that's important. Um, it is also uh, possible that you will uh, be able to pray at once, uh, you know, calling God the way you call your father. Why? Because if, fortunately, look at this. If you had a difficulty with your father, for one reason or another, brother, something happened. So much so there's distance between you and your father, your earthly father, you cannot call God the way you call your father. That's psychologically uh, a difficult thing. So what should you do? Forgive, forgive, and then uh, God gives you the grace you know, to be able to to bridge that uh, that gap there. The Holy Spirit will help you. Brothers and sisters, uh, I hope you understand that. But the, the important thing is uh, really try your very best to uh, to call God. Learn to call God the way you call your dad. That's what Jesus uh, gave us as privilege in the Our Father, and He exercised that in His life. You should see. You should see it. I told you uh, when Jesus addresses His Father, uh, God, in 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 Saint Luke, uh, it is Father. You know. Uh, if you heard him in the Aramaic, it will be Abba. And you see this all the way uh, throughout the, the Gospel of John. It is always Abba, Father. He talks about his Father, my Father. You know, something that way. Very, very intimate. He knows uh, the, his divinity when you think about that. Brothers and sisters, Jesus shared with us this life of God. And then um, um, I'd like you to notice if it is supposed to be a, um, a model prayer, what are we supposed to be imitating? Not only the address, but also how to pray how to pray, you know? And so you will notice the Our Father has two parts. There are the three first parts, Our Father in heaven, holy be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. It's so different from the next four. Give us today, give us, give us notice it is us, our daily bread, forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, lead us not into temptation, it's better lead us not into the test, but deliver us from the from the evil one, not from evil, from the evil one. Brothers and sisters, notice there are some mistakes in our translations of um, of uh, the Our Father, whether in uh, in uh, in English or in Tagalog, for example. I mean, in our language in the Philippines, but the point is uh, um, you are supposed to imitate, you know, how Jesus taught us this. He taught us in two parts, you know. I, of course, we, the, the part we love this is the second part, right? Our Father in Heaven, give us, you know? I mean, no, 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 not that fast. You got to, to uh, go through what, what happened in the, in the, the first three, um, the three um, petitions. Brothers and sisters, holy be your name. That's not very easy to, to, uh, to understand. What is His name not holy enough? In the first place, what do you mean by name? Brothers and sisters, please understand, name, as Jesus understood it and wants us to understand, refers to the essential characteristic of the person you are, that you are speaking with. In other words, who he really is. Here, it is God whom we call Father. In other words, when you say, Our Father in Heaven, Holy be your name, you're saying actually, Our Father in Heaven, may you Notice the name is you be made holy by me. Oh, what the, how do I do that? What is the meaning of holy? Ah, that's a very important question, brothers and sisters. Notice, um, holy in the Bible means, you know, um, something different, detached from, and um, separated from what is earthly, what is flesh, what is carnal, what is ordinary, what is profane, what is sinful. Brothers, did we ever think of it like that? No, we, we don't even give ourselves a chance to think about that. Holy be your name, your kingdom come, your 
Notice it's uh, you know one after the other. No, brothers and sisters, we, during this uh, this uh, uh, season, this uh, this uh, this recollection that we are having, please find time to really ponder, think, meditate on what that we are saying. Holy be your name. May you, Father, be made holy by me. What do I mean by that? I will make you so different from anything and anyone else. You will be the one and only one that I will be faithful to, that will I will love completely over and above everybody else, even myself. Father, you don't have any rival in my life for my dedication to you. Father, you will be the only one I will serve completely and faithfully with total fidelity. Brothers, that's exactly what we are supposed to be meaning by that. Unfortunately, maybe this is the first time you hear it. Don't blame yourselves. Sometimes we priests don't, uh, don't explain. I mean, my, maybe because uh, we never thought about it either. I mean, but it is sad. It is sad. Brothers, look at that. When you really make God holy in yourself, in your, in your, in your, in your person, when you want God to be really the only object of your love and fidelity and, and, and service, uh, of your allegiance and, and real total fidelity and, and availability, brothers, it will mean that uh, you want Him to be the King sitting on the throne of your heart. By the way, we are not talking about kingdom, brothers and sisters. Uh, that's a mistranslation of, uh, of, the, of what Jesus said. Kingdom of God doesn't mean, uh, you know, the, the kingdom, the, the expanse, the, 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 uh, like Great Britain, the kingdom of, of uh, the UK, United Kingdom of Britain. No, no, not like that. It's not the kingdom, it's a kingship, brothers. It's the reign. Um, our Father, may you reign over my, my, over my life, over our life. Brothers, it's like that. Uh, it is important for you and me to understand that. Um, uh, in other words, when we really make God holy, in other words, uh, totally different from anything and everyone else, you know, uh, we can, and He will be the one we will love and, and, and be faithful to and, and really serve completely with all our hearts, our soul, our mind, our strength. Brothers and sisters, then we will like want Him to, to really sit on the throne of our hearts. How do we do that? When is a kid a king? king? When His will is done? If his will is just violated, it's just trampled, it's just um, taken for granted, he's not king at all. He's king in name. No, no, but brothers, uh, this is serious. We want him to really reign in our hearts. We will do his will. Did you realize that, brothers, sisters, that uh, when you um, uh, reckon with the uh, holy be your name, holy be you, may you be made holy, then, you know, uh, the, 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 the second part, the second petition, your, king, your kingship come in our life, may you be my king. And I'm in that, in that regard, I'll do your will all the time. Brothers and sisters, notice the first three petitions come one after the other in sequence, just like that. They, they really um, um, uh, flow from, one, uh, from the very first one. Oh, by the way, please remember, this is supposed to be very obvious when you understand that Jesus, as St. Paul says, um, I like to quote this, for example, it is in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 22, where he says, uh, Jews demand signs, Greeks look for wisdom. But we proclaim Christ crucified. Notice what, notice that, brothers and sisters, that this is what we are preparing for to celebrate this, um, this, um, this um, the, uh, Easter tree you know, the Good Friday, the, uh, uh, the, the Holy Saturday, and the, 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 the Easter. Uh, but uh, on Good Friday, Jesus is crucified. And, he, and Paul was saying, you know, God Jews divine signs, miracles, the Greeks look, always look for wisdom, but we proclaim Christ crucified. The church cannot proclaim any, anyone else or anything else but Christ crucified. Brothers and sisters, for the Jews, Christ crucified is a scandal. They cannot accept them. For the Greeks, it's foolishness. But for those who are called, Jews and Greeks alike, for those who are called by God to belong to the church, believers in Jesus, Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God. Brothers and sisters, that's a very important statement. Jesus, not only the power of God, He is the wisdom of God. You and I have had good teachers and very wise teachers. Brothers, when a good teacher, uh, uh, when a teacher is very good, you, uh, you expect Him to teach you goodness in a good way. 
If he is a, a wise teacher, he will teach you not only what's good, but also what is wisdom. He will teach you wisdom that will stand the test of time. But then, not only he will teach you wisdom, he will teach you in a wise way. If Jesus is that, please remember when you read the Bible, uh, especially the words of Jesus, think of what he is saying and how he is saying it. What he is saying will be wisdom, how he is saying it is in a wise way. So much so, you can, you can see that there is, uh, you know, when there are uh, enumeration, for example, in our Father, there are first three, three uh, petitions addressed to God, and the three and the, the next four petitions is um, concerning our needs. Brothers and sisters, you know this, there is, the, the, the first three are first and the, the last four are, are last. You know, you don't put them in, other, in a topsy, uh, topster, turvy order. Just like a, um, holy be your name, you cannot be put that, and that cannot be put on the third, and you put the third on the um, on the um, how to say on the first, you know, um, your your will be done. Uh, who, who is who are you talking to anyway? And then the uh, the uh, number number two will be in the in the uh, number three, you know, um, your your um, uh, how to say your um, uh, kingdom come, your kingship come, something like that. I mean, you cannot it cannot stand for this. You will see it doesn't work. You got to understand first uh, who are you talking to, and he deserves all the, that that uh, mismentioned afterwards that he should be king in your heart, in your heart, and that you do his will. That's uh, that's uh, uh, understood right away, brothers and sisters. Of course, I I uh, I'm, I cannot uh, most probably uh, uh, continue to, uh, 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 describing to you, uh, 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 explaining and elaborating on the uh, on the four uh, last petitions. Uh, give us today our daily bread. In other words, give us what we need. It's not really what we desire, you know, but what we need. If you will give us what we desire, that's, uh, that's very good. If, uh, and we thank you also. But uh, what we need, we ask from you because we need it. You know? And then forgive us our sins because you know we are sinners. That's the, uh, the debt that we only owe to you. Uh, brothers and sisters, um, um, uh, we know we, we need forgiveness, but we that Jesus that teaches us, we cannot ask God what we did, what we don't like to share to others. If we are not able to forgive others who sin against us, we cannot expect forgiveness. You cannot ask from God what you refuse to others. So forgive us our sins as we forgive. Do not bring us to the test, but deliver us from the evil one. Brothers and sisters, notice it is not temptation. God cannot tempt us. That is in Saint uh, in Saint uh, the James chapter two. God doesn't is, doesn't uh, tempt us. Cannot be tempted either. You know? And so there is no temptation that uh, God will lead us to. No, no, to the test. Yes, because we got to prove our fidelity to Him. Many times we prove our unfaithful. In fact, and of course, um, lead us and uh, do not um, uh, and deliver us. Not just from evil, misfortunes, you know, bad lacks or something like that. No, no, no. From the evil one, brothers and sisters. Notice, um, the, the translators mistook, mistook in translating. Uh, unfortunately, uh, for example, the, um, the, uh, in, the, in the Tagalog version of the Our Father, um, Sambahin ang ngalan mo. Sambahin ang ngalan mo. Doesn't translate, holy be your name, holy be you. It means, let your name, let you be adored. Sambahin. No, no, no. Sasambahin dahil banal. You, you worship Him but with adoration. You adore Him because He is holy. I mean, it is not what Jesus taught us. Notice, I mean, brothers and sisters. And then, not, uh, at the, uh, the young people, lahat ng masama. Hindi lahat ng masama. Doon sa masama, you know. To the, from, from that evil one, brothers and sisters. Brothers and sisters, I wish uh, that um, really this, uh, this um, uh, consideration of Father, I commend to you myself, my life, my spirit, the whole of I am, what I am. Brothers, I hope it will be meaningful. Do we mean it just like Jesus did? In order to, to, uh, to do what Jesus did with all confidence, with all, with all uh, sincerity, with all uh, simplicity, to believe in this Father, in this God who is Father. A Father who loves you and me so much. He gave His only begotten Son who 
said, there is no one greater, no, no greater love than this, but the man lays down his life for his friends. And that's what we are commemorating. Hopefully, we can all also be um, confident in entrusting our whole lives to God. Not only when, uh, in life, but also in death. Not only in sickness, but in health. Not only when we suffer, uh, you know, but also when we rejoice. Everything of our life we dedicate to Him. And so, brothers and sisters, I would like to bless you. And so may Abba, our loving Father, to whom Jesus commended Himself, His whole life and His deaths, really be looking at us with love, just like He looked at Jesus and help us in our lives so that we may be faithful in doing His will. Just like Jesus, so overriding concern his life was doing His Father's will and accomplishing His mission. And so may Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit bless you all.